thank you for coming to the talk. So I'm just going to talk about biomagnetic monitoring and why do we need um, a different different proxy to monitor air pollution. So this this um, this graphic over here basically explains that right you know the traditional methods used to monitor air pollution um, uses very spherical unified diam you know um, par particles where they take into account particulate matter um, in terms of their diameters um, which is basically either uh, PM10 which is all the particulate matter which is less than 10 microns. Then we have PM2.5 measurements, which you might have seen, which are um, every, every other particle, which is less than PM, uh, which is less than 2.5 micron meters. And then comes the more ultra fine particles, which um, my research would basically focus on is, is which goes ne neglected when we are monitoring air pollution using traditional methods. We would only hear about um, particulate matter in terms of 2.5 or 10 measurements. Um, so what, why do we need, uh, what's the big picture that right now there, the concentration of anthropogenic particulate matter is increasing and it's an increasing risk to public health. And with, with increasing urbanization and um, people, you know, the cities developing, even though there have been stricter, stringent policies to curb air pollution, there still there is still more exposure to air pollution than it was before, and this would increase year on year. So the traditional air pollution monitoring monitoring systems do not give a full picture of the pollutants present. They do tell us about the amount of particulate matter um, in terms of um, in terms of their mass uh, per unit volume. Uh, but that is something which could go more higher resolution and that is where we come in um, using magnetic and, uh, you know, microscopy techniques, we can, you know, find, pick up these ultra fine magnetic particles which go unnoticed and uh, biomagnetic monitoring is one of those things where we can use trees and leaves to find us, find, tell more about the source of particulate matter. And the aim is to basically mitigate air pollution, um, you know, using specific tree species uh, where some tree species are better at accumulating particulate matter than other species. And obviously the height comes as a factor because after a certain height, there could be a vortex created where instead of mitigating air pollution, the trees actually inhibit more uh, inhibit air circulation, which can increase uh, local concentrations at a particular road or a building. Um, so why biomagnetic monitoring? Because it can be used as an estimator of ambient PM concentration. Um, it is a good interface for both dry or wet deposition. Wet deposition is in terms of rain, um, could be snow, could be anything. Um, it could be suitable for spatial studies and um, can also, you know, provide a way to, you know, exhibit magnetic, different magnetic parameters across different cities, where some cities might have more vehicular related pollution, while some might have more industrial related pollution. Um, the aims are to find, a, find out about the nature of magnetic carriers in air pollution at the nanoscale also develop and interpret more like the magnetic proxies of this air pollution. Uh, go to cities uh, where air pollution is a bigger problem and where we can quantify it and then kind of use it in, uh, you know, cities in the Europe. So Lahore is one of the cities we might be focusing on. Um, and then basically the, the, the final kind of aim is to actually mitigate air pollution using uh, the data we might have, uh, we might get from, from these monitoring techniques. So this is um, basically not my data, this is from a paper. It just gives an idea of what is actually present and what particles might give us a magnetic 
signal and how, how different are the morphologies under different microscopy uh, tools. So the, these pictures are taken um, from, uh, from a paper from Delgado et al. And this study was done in Italy and it basically shows different kinds of particles present. A, go a good one, which is also magnetic, is ferrite over here. It's an iron oxide and it's usually associated with um, vehicle parts abrasion and stuff like that. Um, some more uh, different particles over here. You can see how some industrial related particles are have a very distinct euhedral grain over here. Um, some of them might also be magnetic. Um, that is what we're here to find out. So this is some, some air filter samples I had where I just had one day on the SEM because that is what I could get. And this is a typical SEM image of wh what you might have in a, in a town or a city. And you can see that how these grains have this bright sub micron or nanoscale particle that could be magnetic. In, in nature, you could see some of these over here as well. And um, here is another slide, which is from a different paper. It's basically applying TEM to particulate, uh, to look at particulate matter. And this is how you can see the scale over here is on nanometers. So we can see how important are these you know, these ultrafine particles, super, which would have a super paramagnetic, you know, signal as well attached to it. And this is what we would focus on. These are not my pictures, uh, but this is something. So there is a case study I am gonna talk about, which is actually the work I did over the past few months. And it is from Padova, Italy. And uh, the location was there Department of Chemical Sciences, so fifth floor, they had this extractor uh, attached to the building where they sucked air into the sampling room and that's where the sampling took place. I got hold of these from the Department of Chemistry at Cambridge. Um, and the background motivation is basically to relate the chemical data to magnetic and microscopy analysis. Uh, key questions we were trying to answer were what fraction of particulate matter is magnetic and how um, are they related to certain pollutant sources and whether there are any magnetic minerals on a nanoscale. So different methods we used, um, hysteresis loops, forks done on, uh, on an AGM and microscopy is to be still done. So I'm just gonna present some magnetic measurements we face some challenges, so because there is very little, um, you know, um, material present on on the air filters, we it had a very weak remnants, and there was a we noticed there was a background remnants coming just from the blank uh, probe. So what we there was also difficulty in optimizing the sample mounted on the AGM. So we came up with a measurement protocol where we uh, measured the blank uh, filter, a uh, blank uh, mount with the grease on, and then we corrected, you know, our, um, our, our actual measurement by subtracting those averages of the blank samples to ensure the sample signal was accurately presented. So here you can see that these are the blank measurements and you can see it's not purely diamagnetic. There was some remnants over there. And this is what could have you know, uh, contaminated our data. So we subtracted this from our measurements over here and we slow corrected our hysteresis, um, which is present over, presented over here. So these are the winter samples on the left, the summer ones on the right. You can see the winters one, uh, winter ones have a higher total magnetic moment, which is what we would expect because usually winters uh, are usually higher, more polluted. So um, these are the averages of all the winter samples, like 15 samples and all the summer samples. And uh, what we can see is basically, is that you can see that there's a, there's a super paramagnetic uh, signal over there and that the, there's this SD, it's extending into a single domain, a stable ridge. And you can see there is a coarse, um, 
pseudo single domain to multi domain background signal in these winter forks. Uh, so the summer ones, you, it wasn't, it's not well defined because the measurements are still going on. Um, so it's a bit noisier over here, but it still has some super paramagnetic um, signal, which is present and a more pronounced PSD signal in the summer ones. So these are just uh, some to uh, some sample, uh, an individual sample where I just want to mention how the and the derivative of the DCD curves shows us that it goes beyond the coercivity distribution goes beyond 300 millitesla, so probably highlighting as something else present other than magnetite. Uh, this is the summer one. You can see at around 300, we can see the coercivity distribution, so presence of magnetite probably. Um, so the coercivities for both of the samples were very narrow between five to eight millitesla. So typically of a soft magnetic fraction such as magnetite. And uh, this is a day plot, basically uh, trying, uh, basically showing that it's lying within the PSD to MD range and ultra fine, you know, super paramagnetic contributions at this part, you know, could be present in the winter samples. So these are the total, uh, this is a kind of a box and whisker for the total magnetization for each of the samples. And you can see that even though the winter ones are a bit higher, the, the, the median isn't very much different from the summer sample. Um, there was no correlation found between the total magnetic moment and the mass of PM. This is for the winter samples. Um, so we failed to reject the null hypothesis that um, there, the magnetic moment is related to the mass. So what are the challenges we might have? Um, different biomagnetic uh, proxies have different signatures and um, we might have to calibrate that for different species. We need to correlate the magnetic signals to PM concentrations and they might not be true from cities to cities. This is a leaf sampling campaign, which um, we are planning to do in Lahore, Pakistan. So it's basically picking up some leaf samples and um, at different heights and at different lengths of the road, and then kind of uh, taking their SARM measurements and their um, SARM measurements to, as one of the proxies to tell how magnetically they're different and also microscopy on these samples to tell us about the different morphologies of particles present. I would like to thank my supervisor, Rich Harrison, for, for helping me with some of the stuff in this. And thank you for listening. Well done, that's a nice talk. It's quite an interesting uh, twist on things at the end of our session. So uh, thank you very much. Um, does uh, anyone have questions? So uh, Adrian, you, you have your hand up there first, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a comment. So a lot of the questions that were being raised and asked, I mean, there was a, 20 years ago, there was a EU funded program called Magna. It was, and there was about 10 postdocs all over Europe working on this. And many of them did a, a combined biomagnetic uh, uh, study looking at the pollution, all these different cities and looking at different type, different types of trees and stuff. So a lot of the questions you're asking seem to have been sort of looked at already. So that, I just think there might be a case for going back and looking at literature. There was a lot of work done 20 years ago on this sort of thing. So, um, you know, the, you, the way that, the way it was phrased, it felt like a bit like a lot of these things were new, but it didn't come across as particularly new. And I guess my question is, I mean, if you've got all these very low temperature particles, sorry, small SSP particles, I mean, have you thought about doing your low temperature measurements? Because if you've got particles which are 30 or 20 nanometers, you're not gonna see them doing room temperature measurements. You need to really, have you thought about doing your low temperature yeah, measurements? Yeah, so that is, that is one of the, Thank you, Aya, and uh, thank you, Adrian. The, we, 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 I have looked at literature and I've seen most of this stuff is done. So what I'm trying to do is build up upon what is already present 
So um, the questions I'm trying to answer are, are gonna look more on the on the ultra fine or the nanoscale bit of it. So that is something which that those studies didn't look at. And uh, doing low temperature measurements is something which is... Uh, Excuse me, I, I don't think that's true actually. I mean, I, I did MOSFAR at low temperature and we looked at particles that were less than 10 nanometers. So uh, to, say that it's, to say that it's not been done is, is, is just wrong, sorry. I mean, obviously there's a lot more work to be done, but I mean, there has but been it's, work it's done it's on this. So, sorry, I would just I want to say I would want to build on yeah, the work which is already done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, th th thanks for that question. I think I think it's a fair enough comment that you, that you wish to be constructive and build upon the work that's been already done. That's fair enough, I think. Uh, Professor Williams, would you like to pitch in with a question or a comment there? Um, yeah, it was similar to, to Adrian. So, you know, my memory of is, is getting worse by the day, but uh, I'd remember that uh, Adrian had done some work in the past and also Barbara Mayer. But I mean, I think uh, what you've done was quite interesting, Asan. And um, I, from my very poor memory of previous work, it did concentrate on particular types of material. I think particularly uh, leaves and trees. And I remember some studies talking about how far back the trees were, the lines of trees from the roads and which way the wind was blowing and all that sort of stuff. But uh, uh, from your work, it looks like you've looked at a much wider range of uh, material. You talked about mosses and, and other material. So, but, uh, but you haven't yet been able to look at any uh, trends with any uh, on these particular material that accumulate on any different type of organic matter. Is that right? That's something you're hoping to do. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So the mention of mosses and lichens are that that's kind of a background review on what, what's been done. I, it's just been two months since I've started this project. So I've not had to have enough time to work uh, to, to you know, uh, present what I've actually done. So what I've actually done right now is basically kind of a background study on how, um, how we can use the, the magnetic proxies to kind of quantify particulate matter. So it's, it's, it's something which is, still in development. And I'm, I'm not disagreeing that something like this hasn't been done. It's, it's just, it's a preliminary work I've done for two, three months. So there isn't any any personal work I've done on mosses or lichens. That's that's something from the literature. A two or three months work, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>